Hello, everyone, and welcome to Why We Love BIM Collaborate Pro webinar. My name is Juliana, and I work in marketing here at MicroCAD, and today's presenter is Tim Corey. At today's webinar, you will discover what you can do with BIM Collaborate Pro and why it is such a popular product that can potentially help your business, which is definitely worth 30 minutes of your time. Um, throughout the webinar, you can ask a question at any given point on the left-hand corner. You can ask Tim to revisit a step or ask any questions. This is your time and we want you to make the most of it. And in the upper left-hand corner, you will find links to our social media and website. Um, also, make sure to check our YouTube channel. Uh, we post all of our webinars there at the end, so you can share with colleagues or watch it on your own time. And without further ado, we'll pass it on to Tim. Hi, Tim. Hi. Oops, I made a mistake there. I covered my screen, so I can't share. Just let me do this. I wanted to share my slideshow with you, um, and I will also be popping over to Civil 3D. So uh, today, what I plan to do is give you kind of a background on what this Autodesk Docs is. We find that uh, even though this has been around for a while, a lot of our users really aren't even familiar with Docs. And then I want to describe what you get when you, I guess, uplift from Docs to BIM Collaborate Pro and what other features are enabled by doing that. So Autodesk Docs, um, on this picture, that's me, uh, kind of a cross between Clint Eastwood in 1968 and uh, Brad Pitt in about 1995, don't you think? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, let's go here. Uh, what is BIM Collaborate Pro? And what is BIM Docs? So Docs is, number one, a file repository, which is not, you know, for most of our customers, that's not the big sell for this product. Yes, it gives you a place to store files, and it's unlimited uh, file size that you can store on your BIM Docs account. Um, but most of you may have local solutions that are fast, et cetera. So this doesn't really give you anything any faster, but what it does is it opens up the ability to do the redlining, the markups and the, uh, and the issues. Okay. And then when we move into BIM Collaborate Pro over Docs, then that enables the use of what's called Jeet Set Manager for web. So, Autodesk or AutoCAD, Civil 3D, uh, make a distinction between the files you open from a BIM docs location as opposed to a local network or a local hard drive location. And it automatically knows where the files are. So if I go and I open a uh, sheet set file from my web location, my Autodesk docs location, well, then AutoCAD is going to open what's called Sheet Set Manager for Web. Okay, similar to the regular Sheet Set Manager that runs in the desktop version, uh, but I'll show you some, what some of the differences are that you can expect. Okay, um, also letting you know that external references, whoops, are, are supported so I can. I can be have a drawing open from my docs account. I can XREF browse into my docs locations and pick drawing files to XREF or pick, you know how with XREF you can also XREF DGN and uh, some image files, TIFFs and JPEGs, you can still do all of that as well, okay? Then we get down to civil 3D data shortcuts. Is, this is what for a civil 3D company, you know, people that are really utilizing civil 3D and you're using civil 3D data shortcuts now uh, and data references now in your local network. Well, 
by having BIM Collaborate Pro, now you can do that and have your projects um, cloud-based and access those files, you know, create data shortcuts, create data references from data shortcuts, et cetera. Okay, so that's one of the key things you would not be able to do if you stay with just BIM docs and wanted to access project data. And then lastly there, uh, we mentioned Revit work sharing. Okay, uh, this seminar is not about Revit, but uh, many of you have the AEC collection, so you also have Revit. You deal with architects or other professionals that use Revit. Um, so BIM Collaborate Pro allows multiple Revit users to edit a single model simultaneously. Okay, so one user could go take the uh, the office, the open office space on level three, while another uh, user could take the uh, the meeting rooms on level two, for example. Both part of the same model, but they each can check out their own portions of it. Okay. Just with BIM docs, you can store files there and go open them, but you're not going to have civil 3D project data sharing of alliance surfaces, corridors, et cetera. Uh, this is just a list of some of the BIM docs uh, features. This is important here, anytime, anywhere access. So most people, I would say, I don't know what the numbers are, but most people have a smartphone. Uh, so you, if you're out somewhere and you have internet access, you'll be able to access your BIM Docs accounts, your BIM uh, Collaborate Pro account, and get into your documents so that you can view the, these documents. Uh, works better on a, uh, on a tablet like an iPad. Okay, it may work only on iPad. I'm not sure if it works on Google devices or not. Okay, and then of course you can access the files through your desktop uh, interface or just a web interface. Okay, they talk about sharing and exchanging. This third uh, item after comma, no limit on storage and no limit on file size. As we know, we work with Civil 3D surface models can get very, very large, and we want to share those. Well, BIM Collaborate Pro does not put a limit on what size of files we can share. Okay. I wanted to show you here what I do to get into my BIM Docs web interface is I always just make a shortcut, makes it easy to get to. Um, so I have a, a hyperlink here. Okay, so let me click on that. That takes me directly to my project and my files within that project. So this is the web interface for my BIM Docs project. Okay. As I look down through here, you can see there's PDF files, doc files. Here's some drawing files. So there's one called Surface Complete, Original Ground Surface, FG Surface Shared. Okay. Here's a possible project if I want to go into it. And it's base drawings. Here's a drawing called Parcel Base. Now, I click that here. If I look here, I can see that file has markups already. I've gone in there previously and made markups. It also tells me that I'm up to version 15 of this drawing. So we can go way back in history. And so we were looking at the BIM Docs web interface. Okay. One of the things I want to note to you is that BIM Docs, although it's a great storage solution, that's not all it is. Okay, so if I go to my BIM Docs interface, 
I can go in there and I can do markups and I can create issues. Okay, so let's go pick a, a drawing file, like say uh, surface complete drawing. That goes. Okay. So now what I can do if I want to do markups, I go here to markups. I'll see any markups that were previously created down in here. We made a, a cloud around here and put it all out. <clears throat> now, markups are not something that you really track like you do issues. If you want to be able to track follow up, you make an issue. Create issue. Okay, what type? It's a design issue. Right now it's open. Oh, it's asking where to put, when you do an issue, it asks you where to put the push pin. Okay, so I want to come in here. And in Bim, we, uh, Bim, we have a question. Um, okay. It says, what is the pricing per seat for BIM Docs and BIM Collaborate Pro? Uh, BIM Docs, if you uh, are a straight civil 3D subscriber, is four fifty per license per year, but it's included if you're an AEC industry collection subscriber. Okay, and that's uh, I'm not sure the difference is price to get a collection compared to just Civil 3D, and then BIM Collaborate Pro is nine fifty per user per year. So what we're looking at is, you know, you guys know the prices on this. Hopefully I'll be able to show you as we go through this uh, reasons why you would want to spend the extra and be able to have uh, BIM Collaborate Pro, All right? Okay, so I place that and I'm going to say remove trees. Who do I want to assign that to you? Here's my list of uh, members of the project, I'll come down and find myself. When's it due? I'll be working Saturday. If I had a location picked, I could put that. Uh, otherwise, I'll just say USA. Okay, who owns this? I do. Root cause. And let's call it... Uh, Code compliance. And I create that issue. Okay. So next time I come in here, let's say someone else had created this issue for me, I come in here, I'm going to have that issue. Now I've been sent an email already that told me that this issue has been assigned to me. So we don't have to do the old sneaker net where someone pops their head in my office and says, hey, by the way, I sent you uh, information on what you need to do about some trees to be removed out on that particular project. I got an email, I can go straight to it. Now, when I'm in, I'm going to escape out of that. There we go. <coughs> so when I'm here in the web interface, viewing my drawing, there's some additional rules here. Okay. If I'm doing markup, I'm just kind of logistic. What do you do, right? Well, here's where you can do a, a cloud style or just a line style. So I'm do line style. I can go like this. And when I point back to that beginning, it closes. Then I can adjust the line thickness, the color if I want, okay, which I will leave it on red now and turn it to green as I fix these issues. Um, if I want to fill area, I can do that. 
Okay. You can also add a call out. So maybe I said something important other than just call out, right? Here's some setting line styles, drawing arrows, some different shapes you can add. Here's just a regular text block. Here's a, like drawing a squiggle. I'm holding the mouse button down to do that, right? And then now down in here, this is important. Here's my layer manager. So if I click this, I get all the layers from the drawing. So if I want to turn off my points, I can just turn off V dash node and the points go away. Most of the points. There's going to be a V dash road dash ditch. I can get rid of some things there, whichever, right? Now you can turn all layers off and all layers on very quickly with that button. The properties window lets you go pick an object in the drawing. Not pick. Oh, I'm still in that mode. Hey, Tim, we have another oh. question. Okay. Um, it says, can you use the L-M-A-N-S? L-M-A-N-S. Elmans. Can you maybe tell me if that's an acronym and what it stands for? Um, if you go to on 24 to the top, um, you could see the, the spelling there in the questions section. And a question, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my AutoCAD it's, screen. Um, You're sending me something else. Okay, Brad, um, can you, do you think can you further elaborate so Tim can understand? Elman is the layer manager command. Oh, layer manager. Okay, so does the layer manager work in, in a BIM-based file is what you're saying. Is it just layman? Yes. There's display manager. Um, if you do layers, like layer properties dialog, is this what you're calling the layer manager? So yes, you have your full layer control. You can do layer states, you can do layer filters, um, whatever you want, same as you would do on uh, desktop based files. wanted to show you some of the things to expect with the sheet set manager for web, which I have turned on here. And you can see here, this is the name of the uh, sheet set file, which is a file that I have stored in my uh, web location. Okay. Once I open that, then I'll see the sheets. Now, what you're not going to have is, <clears throat> you know, how in sheet set manager, you have the tabs, the sheets, 
the sheet views and the model views tabs. Well, you no longer have those tabs. You're going to see the sheets. And then if you want to create a new sheet, you don't, you can't go look on the model tab and look down into a view that's in a drawing somewhere. What you do is you import a sheet by importing a layout that is stored in one of your project drawing files. And that's what will make your the sheets here in the sheet set manager. Now, as far as output goes, you can um, output to uh, PDF files, uh, kind of en masse, publish to PDF like you can with Sheet Set Manager for desktop, but you cannot output to um, your hard copy devices directly from here. Okay, you need to go to PDF first and then spool your PDFs out using, I guess, your PDF viewer or whichever software you would use for that. I know a lot of the printers have their own driver, and you can just drop PDFs onto the driver and it'll school those for you. you. Have full control over your sheet set properties, so you can add properties to the sheet set itself, things like project number, number of sheets, etc., uh, as well as sheet properties, so you can assign properties to individual sheets. Things like sheet number, sheet title, et cetera, can all be added. Okay, same sort of stuff you would do with uh, Sheet Set Manager for desktop. Now, can you mix and match files is something that we get asked a lot. And the answer to that is no. Um, your Sheet Set files that you use in Sheet Set Manager for web need to be web-based files in your Autodesk Cloud, okay? If you're gonna run Sheet Set Manager for desktop, then you'll access uh, DST, which is a Sheet Set file. You'll access that, as well as all the drawings, et cetera, from the local network, either your local hard drive or your local network, okay? So there's no mix and match as far as that goes. No contamination allowed, if you want to put it that way. Okay, a little bit about uh, collaboration for Civil 3D. This is the part of the whole thing that really makes it so that, uh, you know, Civil 3D can work uh, as normally. I'll close that. Uh, it would previously. So I can go in here and I can say, well, and you're used to doing this, right, for setting up your. Data, your data shortcut projects, set your working folder. Difference is you don't set it to a local drive, you set it to your BIM docs area. Now I've got some shortcuts that I made, which let me get there very quickly. And I want, uh, I'll use this one. So Tim's is going to be the working folder, and then each of these is a potential project. Okay, it's going to default to that collaboration for Civil 3D project. Okay, that's good. So now as I look down in here under data shortcuts, you see I have surfaces that have been shared. I have, I don't have any alignments at this point or corridors, but then, so I have this drawing, right? I would probably make sure I associate project to current drawing. This is a good practice with Civil 3D in general. Okay, what I wanna do now is I'm gonna take and write my corridor out. So I'll go here to manage, create data shortcuts, and I want to share this corridor in this drawing with that web-based uh, project. Okay, so what surfaces? Uh, okay, 
corridor top is good. I'm just going down here to corridors. Now, when I pick a corridor, notice it automatically finds the necessary center line alignments, profiles that are required for that. All right. And those get added automatically to be shared. So I don't have to go down and go, let's see, this corridor has 10 baselines and they are this, 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 and this. I just pick corridor and it finds all of the baselines that are used in that corridor. And I would say, okay. So it's doing those. So now down here in my project, here I have that corridor is shared now with the project. So if I, I had opened or, or uh, was in another drawing, okay. And project, so I just go here and create a reference to that. It's going to bring the center line and its profile, right? Automatically. So that corridor has now been added into the drawing collection. And there it is. Okay, and then we apply styles so we see all the various parts of it, et cetera. Okay, so this is uh, really the same way that you would perform the same uh, steps. You'd do it the same on the desktop version as you would uh, accessing the project through the cloud with BIM Collaborate Pro. So you don't have to learn uh, a new workflow in order to use uh, this software. Okay. Uh, just wanted to let you know about support for XREFs. I'm sure most of you use external references. Um, this allows you to use XREFs. They work the same way with path types and reference types, either attachments or overlays. Uh, where you place them, uh, et cetera, what scale, all that sort of stuff is exactly the same. Okay, except that this is going to let you access your uh, BIM Collaborate files, your BIM Docs files to become XREFs in BIM Docs based drawings. Okay, this uh, is a little slide that uh, Juliana put together for us letting you know where our uh, MicroCAD's various offices are headquartered in Watertown, Mass, or Boston, if you want to say Boston. It's close. I think uh, Watertown's just like inside Boston, I think. I don't know the area myself. And then we're in New York, New York, Connecticut, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Maine, West Virginia, New Jersey, Tennessee, and California. Uh, we have a couple of upcoming webinars. You see the top one is today, why we love BIM Collaborate Pro. Real-time rendering with Revit and Enscape. Getting started with PDM, which is uh, product design and manufacturing, I think, PDM. And key workflows within PDM. Okay. Well, that's all I had to say today, um, other than thank you very much for attending. Uh, my name is Tim Corey, and if you ever have uh, civil questions, problems, et cetera, uh, you want someone to talk to, I'm available. Just give a call to the office and say you want me, and they'll ring me up, and we'll have a chat. So thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Tim, for that wonderful presentation. And yeah, as Tim mentioned, if we want to learn these topics in detail, you can always take a custom training with him or someone else on our team. We also offer group classes online. So yeah, be sure to be checking the MicroCAD website for future webinars. And that concludes our webinar today. Thank you everyone for attending and thank you so much, Tim. Thank you very much. And uh, you know how to contact me if you need me. Thank you. Bye-bye.